Hey folks, welcome back. I am in my garden. I came up to pick the, the green beans, the string beans, and just ate five or six of them. But on my way to the garden, I saw in some tall grass some Japanese beetle. Now I've been looking for them. I have not been wanting to find them, and I haven't in my garden. So all has been good. I did a quick look this morning and didn't see any, but then I just saw those on the on the grass, so I came up here just to make sure I didn't miss any, because you want to catch them early, right? Because they, they really love pole beans for some reason, here anyway, they love pole beans, and they will completely destroy your plants. So I come up and took a look at my pole beans, all are good. I looked at my bush beans, all are good, and I thought I'd come down because I want to keep on top of any potato bugs that might arrive, and uh, so far so good. The only thing that I have seen on my potatoes are the tortoise beetle, right? And those just do cosmetic damage, and that's just barely anything. So I just tend to leave them alone. Sometimes I'll come through and pick some off, but... If they're not going to damage my, my plants other than cosmetic, they're not going to set them back, and then I will just let them be, right? So, everything is good. I'm in between my two rows of potatoes. They're doing absolutely spectacular. Over here, I have my Pontiac Reds. Over here, I have my Kennebec and my Russets, right? So they're all doing fantastic. I'm not going to complain. Some of them still have some blossoms. Some of them are going to blossom. Some of them are past blossom stage. So they're kind of all over the place. So, but I know they're producing potatoes, so all is good. I can just leave them alone. I do have to walk through every day to stay on top of any, any kind of issue, like the potato bug. Catch that right off the bat so I don't get into trouble there. I also go through my squash and cucumber plants and I look for squash beetles, cucumber beetles. I did find two cucumber beetles this morning and disposed of those. And you could look every day, several times a day folks, and you could still miss them. So I make a habit of, of doing it every day whenever I can. So Today I've got to pick some more kale, I have to pick some string beans, I have to pick the Swiss chard, and I've already done my weeding. I've thinned out my turnip, so everything is looking good, other than we need a lot of rain, folks. We just, we just need rain. So, you know, I got thinking this morning, for some reason I just woke up thinking about it. I don't know if I had a dream or just a conversation I had yesterday with a nice young lady, Ashley. I don't know if it was that, but I had a dream that that for some reason I lived in the woods. Well, I do live in the woods currently, but it was on a body of water. And it was a, I don't know if it was a big pond or if it was a small lake I'm not really sure but it was wooded all the way around and out front had been cleared and there were garden plants everywhere folks there were rows of, of vegetables growing there were containers of vegetables growing <clears throat> life seemed to be good life seemed to be good at camp, at this particular camp. I'm not sure whose camp it was, no idea. Um, but life was good in that, at that campsite in the woods, surrounded, well, by a lake or a pond. But outside of that space was, hell was breaking loose, right? There was a lot of chaos, there was a lot of violence, there was a lot of thievery. So I'm not sure in my dream if if this country collapsed or what was going on, I'm not sure, but in this little, little camp area, 
we were living quite comfortably. We were, we were catching fish to eat. We had water to cook with. We had water to bathe in. We had water to drink. We were growing our own food. So I don't remember seeing chickens or anything like that, but if you, if you have a body of water with fish in it, you can eat fish for your protein, right? But life seemed to be good. Now, I spoke to a young lady yesterday about her going to camp, her and her family going to camp, and the fish that they were catching, and, and how it was back in the woods out of nowhere, and her family just really, really enjoyed themselves there, right? So, that may have been where this dream came from, I'm not really sure, but if it was me, and if family had a camp, back away from it all, away from a lot of people, or you had a camp, or your family had a camp, or you, you shared it with other folks. If you were going to camp, I would think that I would make that so if you had to go there, or felt you needed to go there for your safety or sanity, that you were all set up. You had a place where you could start a garden, You've got an opening well enough to put containers of food. Maybe you were planting on the edge of the water. Maybe you were, had a floating garden out, a garden out in the water. I would make sure that I had all kinds of fishing tackle. I would make sure that I had a, a bean hole, a bean hole set up for bean hole beans. I would make sure that I had a place in the shade where if I had to put something in the ground to stay cool that I could do that. I would have a means of water filtration. I would have pots and pans so I could, I could boil water for safe drinking. I would, I would spend a lot of time doing that if that was just me. Now here I am in the woods, right? I live on a bog. That bog, that bog water is, well, it's about 85 degrees out, so that water is probably 80 degrees. I'm not kidding. So that water, it gets really stagnant in the summertime, especially August, what we call dog days of summer. It gets really stagnant. And because it is a peat moss bog, it throws off an odor when the water is not moving. So there is an odor close to the bog. Those, excuse me, those folks that, that come over to visit me ask if they could smell that stagnant water and they can't. So we start walking down to the water's edge and, and we're within just a few feet from it before they can start smelling that, that stale water, right? So, and that water is very, very warm, especially this time of year. And it is a peat moss bog, so the bottom is warmer than, than uh, the surface, and the surface is warmer than the middle because the heat, you know, all that. So I'd be awful desperate. I'd be off, have to be awful desperate to, to have to sterilize that water and drink it, especially in the summer, folks. You, I'd have to... I'd have to sterilize it two or three times before I felt comfortable drinking it, right? And there are bloodsuckers in there that long, folks, and turtles and, and all kinds of stuff. But this bog here, it's too warm for much of anything but junk fish. But that that's, is what it is, and it still would be a meal if I was hungry. I could eat those small horn pout, and every once in a while you'll catch a chain pickerel in there. But other than that, there's, there's really not much in there this time of year. Uh, turtles, maybe. So, yeah, so that's what I would do. If I, was, if I had a place I could get away, I would, I would set that up in case you had to go there if you wanted to or needed to or you felt it was for your own safety. I would be setting that up. If you're not the only one that owns it, I would talk to the the rest of the folks that own it and maybe y'all can band together and, and make it so if everybody has to go in there how they would how they would survive how they could set things up 
and all of that. That's just what I would do. It would beat the hell out of living in town or a city or on a major, major road, right? I wouldn't want to live any place but the woods if this country were to collapse. I just wouldn't. Oh. It is supposed to be like 80, 83, 85 today. It's already up to 85, and it's supposed to be 88, I think, tomorrow. 88, or in the mid to high 80s with high humidity, uh, about for a week. Two days of potential rain. One is 40%, so I don't count on any of that. And one is 88% uh, chance rain, and I count very little on that, even when it says 100% chance of rain, somehow the rain misses us here. So, I've got to get back at it, and thank you for stopping by.